just another Phalaenopsis repot. This is my Phalaenopsis mini mark repot and that makes it extra special. And the fact that you clicked on this video also makes it extra special. So thank you so much for being here. My Phalaenopsis mini mark <laughs> given to me by Anonymous is ready to be transitioned into Lekka and self-watering without hesitation because the clock is ticking for cooler temperatures. Look at these gorgeous root tips. And we're going to take advantage of the fact that she is producing these root tips right now. And while my temperatures are still acceptable for her to settle into the new media. Now, there's something I wanted to show you. However, check this out. You can see the stress this orchid has sustained during her travels down here to Spain. So we have a kinked leaf where it started to grow and then she started to recover. And we are also at the point where she's growing out. We can see that there is a little bit of yeah stress still prolonged in the leaf. So that's going to, you know, stay there. But other than that, the orchid is looking quite all right. So what we're going to do is take her out of the pot, transition her. I'm glad you're here. I hope you stay. Let's see what we're up against. We're fortunate to have no roots growing out of the bottom of the pot. <laughs> that should make things easier. A week ago, in anticipation of this repot, I have already given her her calcium magnesium soak. And this soak today was a full-on fertilizer soak. I'm trying to stay as little messy as possible, trying to keep things contained, because there's something I want to talk to you about. We always have this, you know, what we call the dreaded plug when we have a Phalaenopsis repot, and of course we have one there. But I don't want to talk about it being a death cage per se. You see, the thing is, what makes this thing a death cage is what we're seeing happening here. The whole thing, that material that is in there is fantastic while the orchid is a seedling. It only becomes a death cage when they don't take the roots out and repot properly with fresh media. But while it is in the stage of just being contained in this little basket, it is not a death cage. As a matter of fact, it is high humidity, great for seedlings, that's why they do it. But what happens when they sell the seedlings on at the nurseries where the seedlings are received, that is when it becomes a problem because all they do is plop it into a pot, fill around with media, and that's when problems can start. And we do have some death of the seedling roots in the middle. That's to be anticipated. Comes out very, very easily. So you see, in of itself, this is not the problem. The problem is what doesn't happen afterwards. And if I were to receive a seedling, let's say, a seedling Phalaenopsis in a cage like this, I would not be concerned about repotting it. I would leave it in that basket until such a time, season, temperatures, everything is adequate for potting it up into bark. Only then will I actually remove it before putting it in bark. And this bark is super degraded. It's almost soil-like. Now I had my reservations about repotting my mini mark this time of year because as I mentioned, we're heading into the colder months of the year. Lekka has an evaporative cooling effect, which is not ideal for the warm growing Phalaenopsis. So I just thought, am I gonna do it now? Am I gonna wait until spring? Because I could have waited and left her in the medium and worked with the media throughout the winter season. I made a video about that actually. The only reason I didn't do that is because she is a gift and she's not an experimenting Phalaenopsis. She's a gift. That is why I'm going to proceed with what I would normally do with any other Phalaenopsis in my collection and take her out 
of this media and not try to use this orchid as an example of proving a point that you can work with the media of an orchid indefinitely if you know what you're doing with your pH levels. And no, I don't actually have an orchid as such yet that I would consider an experiment to prove my point about that. But anyway, Phalaenopsis mini mark, let's see. First of all, I've got to wash my hands. I can't work like this. Let's rinse some of the roots off. I'll give her a little bit of a spray and see what we're up against. I don't see that I'll be chopping off anything from here. It's all looking pretty, pretty good. Even if the velamen up here is dead, I'm going to leave it on because the root down there is viable. Got a little something, something going on here. Just a little snip there. And there's a little something going on down here, I thought. Not sure. We're going to rinse her out. The fact that the soil, <laughs> not even bark, was in the condition that it was in <laughs> made this cleanup super easy. The layman has not been damaged during the process of this repot. Ah, there we go. There's some the layman that came off pretty easily. Yes, not a single bit of the layman was destroyed <laughs> during the process of this repot. I think that's amazing. That's good stuff. It means we won't be here all night. There we go. That'll work for me. What's going on underneath there? Okay, don't get confused. That is still a viable root all the way down there. So I'm leaving that on. That little old spike is coming off all by its lonesome. That's great. Nothing else to do here but get her into her pot. Hey, hey. Look at this little trooper. Good grief. I had a 15 centimeter pot prepared for her, but I don't like how high she's coming out of the media. Yeah, the base should not be below the media, but this is, yeah, I don't want to be doing this again too soon. Once is enough and hopefully she will settle in and I don't have to disturb her again. So we're going from 15 centimeters to 18 centimeters. Let's do a little status check here. Yeah, I'm liking that much better. No stress on the roots. We'll keep her like that. I think I'm even going to tighten that loop. There's no need to be doing any kind of lack of going underneath and all that stuff. Great, great long roots. Now we need some water. And if you're seeing that little piece of bark there, I haven't forgotten it. I'm just not going to remove it because there's a beautiful little root tip going on there. So that's going to stay where it is. Now, a small little detail, but because the media was the way it was, close to being a soil kind of media, I'm going to be using small leka for her. Those roots are accustomed to being in a highly water retentive media and small leka will simulate the same circumstances. And I want to put my tag in first so I see where the roots are. And let's gently get this leka in there. Having got my first layer of leka in, I'm now going to work my way from the front to the back by filling the pot. This way I can soon let go of my little mini mark. Let's drain her and see how the leka has settled around. Teeny tiny bit of plain RO water. She's had everything that she's needed up to this point. Hey. 
And here she is with her other mini compadres, except that she is the fancy one. And the other ones I have are just mini Phalaenopsis complex hybrids. She's the special one, and of course, in a bigger pot. Judging by the root system though, this was the best decision to make. And if all goes well, I won't be needing to repot her in a year's time. And now she's going to stay here also overnight, but she has plenty of breeze coming through here. If something is a little too wet around the stem, I feel a lot safer that she's in this breeze way. My other mini fowls have lived outside now for the past couple of weeks, so I'm sure that the mini mark will do just fine here. This could have almost been a real-time repot filming if it hadn't been for all the noise distraction beyond the hedge. It was fun, and I hope you stayed. I hope you enjoyed. Really appreciate you watching. I wish you a fabulous day on one condition, though. Please, that you stay safe. Take care. Bye.